WrestleMania 29 is in the record books, and we have a complete wrap-up of the event, along with the announcement of the winner of the 2012 PWR Fantasy Draft. It all starts at this moment, right here on Primetime Wednesday Night. WRC legend, backyard one-time knockouts, diva, straight edge, hardcore, hall of fame hero. And we're coming off the heels of WrestleMania 29, <clears throat> just this past Sunday night on pay-per-view. And we can call this, I guess, David, the WrestleMania hangover edition of the Pro Wrestling Report primetime, as we're going to be taking a look in depth at WrestleMania match by match as it happened this past Sunday. WrestleMania hangover, are you kidding? You're still hungover from WrestleMania? Uh, I was never hungover at WrestleMania. Uh I said, you're, are you still? Well, of course, it's still in, fresh in the mind. It just happened a couple of days ago. It did, and we're back in the, our own air-conditioned studios. Well, let's talk about the main events of WrestleMania, at least two of them anyway, starting with the WWE Championship matchup. It was The Rock versus John Cena. This was the rematch from last year. John Cena enters with his sights set on the WWE Championship held by The Rock. A great match would ensue, and at the end of that matchup, John Cena would walk out of MetLife Stadium, the new WWE Champion, but after that was more newsworthy as he and The Rock shaked hands, raised each other hands, <coughs> some people calling that a passing of the torch. No matter what, it resulted in a brand new WWE Champion. Your thoughts on this matchup at WrestleMania? Well, first of all, the matchup was solid. There was good wrestling, two guys going out there and entertaining the 80,000 people. But the real story, like you said, was after the match when The Rock and John Cena met center of the ring. And they chit-chatted back and forth for at least 30 seconds, maybe even a minute. Had a conversation. They did have a conversation. And then they hugged. And then, of course, John Cena presents The Rock to the audience. John Cena goes to the top of the ramp. Mm -hmm. The Rock then mouths to everybody, I love you, thank you, goes out, kisses his, I'm guessing his girlfriend, his daughter, his mom, his ex-wife, the whole thing, hugs everybody. John Cena's still waiting at the top of the ramp for The Rock, and he salutes him. That there tells me, is The Rock done? Was, was, was The Rock's job for the last year and a half to two years simply to elevate John Cena to Rock Stone Cold you know, status in the company? The match itself compared to 2012, compared to WrestleMania 28 in Miami. I think it was better than last year's. Better than last year's, uh, but why was it? I think because the guys were a little more familiar with each other. Uh, I think The Rock was just so ridiculously over in his hometown that it seemed one-sided. But this was more of a balance, not saying it was balanced Rock versus Cena fans, but I just think they were both a little more comfortable working with each other, knowing what the end result was going to be. And uh, I think they had better flow, able to put together a better match and call some different spots. Now, big news about The Rock, who was absent this past Monday night. You questioning whether or not this was his last match or his swan song in WWE. We're going to talk about that this Friday in hashtag hot tag, looking at all the controversy surrounding The Rock from this past Monday night and his absence from WWE Raw and his future in the professional wrestling business. Speaking of futures in the professional wrestling business, one was preserved this past Sunday night at WrestleMania as Triple H, whose career was on the line, got a victory over Brock Lesnar. And this matchup was a anything-goes matchup. No rules, no disqualifications. Shawn Michaels in the corner of Triple H. Paul Heyman, obviously, in the corner of Brock Lesnar. And this match would see Brock Lesnar just about tap out, come as close as I think we've seen him to tapping out in that matchup but it would not be that. It would be a pedigree on the stairs and a pinfall that would give the game his win, his victory, and allow him to remain in the uh, COO and wrestler role in WWE. And these two guys had a fight. They beat each other up. It was physical. It was emotional. You had Paul Heyman getting involved. You had uh, Shawn Michaels getting involved. Triple H got beat up. Uh, dry ice hit him on his side. 
burned his, coming out, yeah. burned his rib, you know, uh, burnt his skin. He tweaked up his arm and his, and his hand. That was all beat up. Uh, Shawn Michaels would have beat up from the F5. Brock Lesnar, obviously, you know, he got his teeth kicked in. Brutal, old school punch and kick and kick and punch wrestling match. And I think the match was better than what people are saying it was. How so? Because it, it, it was a fight. I mean, he's in there fighting a UFC world champion. So he's not going to wrestle him. It's a street fight. It's right. no hold barred. Right. Nobody wants to see suplexes. Nobody wants well, to Brock see him. Well, Brock Lesnar resembled Taz for a little while at the beginning of that matchup with suplexes. But I, I'm saying the the, the the regular suplex where you're holding him up like that. You know, I mean, he, he was doing. The Ric Flair suplex? Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want to see hip tosses and arm drags. You want to see two guys go out there and try to knock each other out. And that's what they did. It was a brutal matchup. It was a match that was extreme in its nature. And again, amazing how close Brock Lesnar came to tapping out. It seemed that that might be the way of the match for several minutes. There was no way Brock Lesnar, the former UFC world champion, was going to tap out to Triple H. But it seemed it that means way. More, is... It means more at WrestleMania to pin Brock Lesnar than to make him tap. Because Triple H is not a UFC fighter. Right. He's not MMA trained. Right. He's a professional wrestler, and his goal was to make it w was to pin him, not make him tap. Point being, they did a great job as performers in making the audience, at least a mass part of it, believe that potentially Brock was going to tap out. Well, and, and Brock did a great job of selling it, but mm -hmm. when he was in that arm bar for so long, yeah. th there's no way. I mean, you just, you just it, it was almost too long he was in it, but uh, those two guys, I mean, even... I, as much as I liked the match, I didn't like the fact that Shawn Michaels had to get involved. Really? Yes. You know, until Shawn Michaels' music hit in MetLife Stadium. You forgot he was there, right? I forgot he was even part of the matchup. Yeah. That's how uh, insignificant it was. I mean, was. if you need Shawn Michaels to negate Paul Heyman, you know what I mean? I mean, I get it. It's his buddy. He gets a payday out of it. You know, he gets to be at WrestleMania and the whole thing. But for Triple H to be beat Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman without Shawn Michaels, I think means more. This match occurred after the matchup between CM Punk and The Undertaker. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Was that a weird spot for this matchup? A very active matchup, a very engaging emotionally matchup from the fans between Punk and Undertaker, followed by this, then followed by Cena Rock. The second half of the show was all main events. But uh, it seemed as if this might not have been the best place for this match. Well, you know what? It's because they ran short on time. You know, you got guys like Puff Daddy or P. Diddy or Diddy, whatever you want to call him. That changes the match order? When he takes up seven, eight minutes. Four and a half. It doesn't matter. Seven, eight it minutes. Does. He, it was four and a half minutes how long he performed. But it was more than that. It was, you know, on the run sheet, it's more than that. That took away time from something. Yeah. You know, and 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 of and, 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 and exactly on Team Super Friends and Ten Side didn't get their pay-per-view points, which we'll talk about that later. Oh, Linda will. And um, that would have been the match to recharge the crowd. Yeah. With the dancing and the funny haha, -ha. but the crowd sustained. They were able. Did they? I think so. I mean, Punk Taker emotional, Brock. Hunter, emotional. Cena and Rock was emotional. I mean, any one of those three could have closed the show. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they go with the WWE Championship match. But, um, yeah, usually there's something in between there just to, you know, recharge the crowd a little bit. Um, Triple H, uh, a, little, a few people surprised that he actually won this matchup. Now, if you look at Brock Lesnar's history, he beat Triple H at SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. He lost to John Cena in Extreme Rules last year. What does this do, if anything, to the uh, presentation of the beast, the monster, it, be, Brock Lesnar? You know what? But, but his, and I mean, his UFC career, he had a losing record. Mm -hmm. So it's the same right now as his wrestling career. True. You know? <laughs> so True. Brock Lesnar is still a box office draw. I'm sure his next match, he's going to, you know, do something special and he'll, he'll get his heat back. But, I mean, is Brock Lesnar really needed, though? I will say I don't think he added as much to the grandeur that was WrestleMania 
than I thought, as I thought he would. Now You didn't see anything mind. about Brock Lesnar. You didn't see him doing interviews. He wasn't doing any yeah. press. He didn't do any media. He, he was on the poster. He sold some tickets, I'm sure. But that's it. Yeah. But you didn't see him making the media rounds as the way The Rock did, as the way John Cena did. You know, uh, CM Punk was doing interviews all around New York. Triple H was, you know, ringing the bell. You didn't see Brock Lesnar see. anywhere. Point very well made. It's almost like he was a ghost going into WrestleMania. Yeah, he just showed up, did his thing, and left. And lost. He is the biggest loner in professional wrestling. And it has uh, put him in a very good spot in the company. <laughs> oh, yeah, getting the hell of a payday out of it. Exactly. Uh, next matchup would be uh, Chris Jericho going up against Fon. Dong. That is ridiculously obnoxious. Fandango, big elaborate entrance, dancers, multiple dancers. Gets the win over Chris Jericho. I, I, I felt that this would be a strong matchup. It was a little weird, though, that it was Fandango's first matchup in a WWE ring on television, and it was against Chris Jericho, but they delivered a great wrestling matchup, a solid wrestling matchup, rather, and a surprise win by Fandango in that match over Chris Jericho. I, you watched Be the Booker. How was that a surprise win? I told you he was going to win. Did you? you Absolutely. You also said Ryback would win. You also said Zig Langston would be the new tag champs. You also said Barrett would win. You also said uh, that uh, Swagger would win. You also uh, said a lot of things. No, so. no, 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 no. no. I, that's how I would have booked it. I didn't oh, say they were going to win. Uh -huh, I forgot, because if it goes that way, if it doesn't go that way, it's not a prediction. Nah, Understood. I, I need a rule sheet for Be the Booker. Fandango is... Vince McMahon's latest Didn't project. Right, you know. I don't have to. It's Fandango oh. is, his, is Vince McMahon's latest project. Da, he da, is going to push, da, push, da, push, da, push, push until this kid gets over. And Monday Night Raw, he was over like a million bucks. Look, you're, you're even humming his song right now. Oh, was I? Yeah. I didn't even notice. We'll definitely talk about Raw this upcoming Saturday night on Primetime. As a matter of fact, on Primetime Saturday night, we're going to talk about the Fandango effect. But this match put Fandango on a different stage in WWE, and you got to thank Chris Jericho, who for the second year order of WrestleMania does all he can to make somebody else look great. And he did. You know what? It was a solid match. The finish was a little bit of a cluster, but not terrible. But the end result is what happened on Monday, and that's what matters. But will it matter next Monday night? That, that'll be the real question. Uh, the, yes, it will. Uh, another matchup, six-man tag team matchup. Randy Orton, The Big Show, and Sheamus versus The Shield. The Shield wins that matchup. And, of course, the dissension that we saw carry over into Monday and will see carry over into Friday Night SmackDown was still there. The Shield, though, gets a big win on a big stage. What a ridiculous match. How so? I mean, The Shield did a fantastic job. I mean, their in-ring chemistry is awesome, but you take Show, Sheamus, and Orton, and they're just a mess. I mean, who really wants to watch those three guys in a program with each other right now? It's been done so many times. Give us something new. How's it been done so many times? You're talking wrestling each other, not as a team. Right. Show and Sheamus had a program. Mm -hmm. Orton and Sheamus had a program. Mm -hmm. Orton and Show has had a program. Mm -hmm. So who else could you have thrown at the shield? There was nobody else because they had to get the shield over, and by the shield beating that, those three elevates them to, you know, further up. Then this past Monday night on Raw, we would see the shield with a, what what did they call it? It was going to be a history-making yeah. impact. Uh, they made, it wasn't. We're going to talk about <laughs> Raw impact. later, you said. Not don't, don't, I thought we were going to talk about Fandango later and the crowd on Raw later, but we're going to talk about, um, more about WrestleMania 29 uh, when we come back after this timeout. And uh, actually, as a matter of fact, right after this timeout, David Hero, we're going to go to Linda Kay, who's over in Studio Q. And she's got the Q? official tabulation. Yeah, Q. Official as in tabulation. Sugar Cube? Q. As in letter in oh. the alphabet. Oh. She's got the official tabulations in the announcement, the winner of the 2012 PWR draft. That coming up next here on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time uh, Wednesday night.
final event of the 2012 PWR Draft was last Sunday's WrestleMania. And with that, we also have a winner to announce. At WrestleMania, the Nelson family scored 370 points with Daniel Bryan garnering the most team points at 80. The Super Friends scored 370 points with John Cena grabbing the team high with 120 points for his WWE Championship win. It is important to note that if the scheduled Road Scholars versus Tons of Funk match would have taken place, the family would have scored at least another 30 points and the Super Friends would have upped their score by 60 points. But even with that, it would not have tipped the scales far enough to change the outcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce the winner of the 2012 PWR Fantasy Draft. With 2,625 points overall, the Nelson family. This makes it the second consecutive draft victory for the family, which means the family is also undefeated at WrestleMania. All is not lost for the Super Friends, though, as they did have the 2012 point leader on their team. With 395 total points, John Cena is the 2012 PWR Draft MVP. Congratulations again to the Nelson family for winning the 2012 PWR Draft. What's wrong? You okay? I thought you were gonna dance with us. It was a celebration. I won! Two years in a row. You know what I need? I need my trophy. Absolutely need my trophy. Because you see, here's the thing. Do you realize I, I was cheated again. again? How were you cheated? I was cheated. How? Please tell First me. First of all, Mr. Gore. Cody Rhodes was kept off the pay-per-view. Cody Rhodes was uh, not on the pay-per-view, correct? And Lord that's, you Tensai. You know what that is? That's karma for you trying to steal him Lord and Tensai take him so I couldn't have him was on was off the pay-per-view. Zack Ryder Who? was off. Zack Ryder. Oh, he had a match off. on Monday night, though. You know. Do you know what, though? Linda said, as, even if all those people, now this Zack never had a chance. Even if all those people were on the pay-per-view, you'd have still lost. Whoops. 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 You know what? Winner! April 27th is our next draft, right? Well, Linda's going to announce the date on Saturday's show, but that sounds about right. I am going to blow up my entire Super Friends team. Oh, yeah, you probably should. Because they didn't do and, you no and, good. And I am, from now on, there are no more friends involved in this because certain guys <laughs> didn't live up to their expectations. Winner. Winner. You know what? It, where's but my chicken dinner? You know what? Listen, listen. I will say this. I can let you win this time. Again? Yeah. Because I know in two weeks from now, we have an appointment to get some ink on that charm right there. Oh, this is, my pins are fine. No, 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 no. I got plenty of ink. Remember our little wager, Undertaker, CM Punk? I'm sorry. Yeah. I no, issue. We have plenty of video of that. I've already made an appointment. We're going to go in. When's the appointment? It's the week. It's, it's a couple days prior to I the hope draft. It's not a Saturday because we're busy. No, on no, it's going to be on a Thursday. Well, my legal team make sure you Make sure contract. you shave your arm to get the little hairs off of there. I already do. So when they, you know, zip you in there, it'll be fine. I like to thank everyone. I have to give my speech. You know what? Speech There's still. nobody to thank. I like you know what? To thank thank Cody Rhodes. I like to thank Cody Rhodes. Thank Lord Tensai. I like to thank Lord thank Tensai. Zach Ryder. I like to thank, thank Zach Ryder. Ken Anderson. I like to thank Ken Who, Anderson. Yeah, exactly.
thank my entire team I'd for like tanking. I'd like to thank Robbie E. I'd like to thank, who else did you pick? <laughs> Congratulations, I would like to give you some props just as a consolation prize. You had the MVP in John Cena. Yes. 195 points. I know. And <laughs> see where that got you. And can't you... <laughs> Whoa. So you know what? To all y'all out there who keep wearing this ridiculous, oh, notice how you're not wearing that Super Friends shirt this week. Ridiculous. Oh, I'm a Super Friends. You know why? Ooh. Because I'm sold out of them. That's why. You see why. what it gets you? You see what it gets you? On the losing end of the game. That's where it gets you. Ha-ha! <laughs> Woo! You didn't even compliment me, compliment me on my dancing. It was terrible. Five. I was more impressed with, impressed with Damien Spl uh, Damien's Linda Splits. <laughs> Let's uh, continue talking about WrestleMania 29. You know what? I really don't we... want to talk about anything. You know what? You rubbed it in. Of course I did. You just couldn't. Of you, course you just, I did. You, because you just you couldn't win. Lost again. Two years. I was cheated. How you so? know what? First year, I had Miz on my team, which was one him? of your guys. Who picked him? I got Who him back him? On, a, on a wild card. Uh huh. Even CM Punk didn't help. Everyone's favorite, you know, the Messiah of pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah. He did nothing for me either. Woo! I'm not taking any more of your endorsed jabronis on my team. They don't Good. help. Good. They don't help. Because whatever you touch turns to copper. Because they would have been golden on the Nelson family. <sighs> Nelson family shirts are available right now at PWRshow.com. Show your support for the recognized symbol of excellence in professional wrestling. Let's continue talking about WrestleMania 29, ladies and gentlemen. And another matchup, David Harold. I'm not sure you were pleased with the outcome of Ryback versus Mark Henry. Mark Henry gets a win in that matchup, but Ryback leaves strong. You know what? They both left strong. I mean, it, was, it wasn't a scientific encounter. As it should not have been. It wasn't terrible. <laughs> it was passable. You had two big Brahma bulls in the ring, butting heads. But, you know, like we talked about on Be The Booker, we said that the winner of that match would most likely go on to be the next number one contender. Mm -hmm. Well, both guys left with steam. Mark Henry got the win, Ryback got his heat back, and they both had important roles on Monday Night Raw. Mark Henry getting that matchup with John Cena, which at one point was going to be for the WWE Championship, but Ryback... If he would have beaten him. Ryback, of course, standing tall at the end over John Cena of Raw. Another matchup, though, this one for the World Heavyweight Championship, ladies and gentlemen. It was Jack Swagger versus Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio leaves New York, still the World Heavyweight Champion. This matchup, David Hero, unfortunately, 80,676 people in MetLife Stadium. It didn't appear as if enough of them cared about this matchup. And let's talk about Jack Swagger's entrance. He didn't have one. Because you didn't see it. We saw it. He had a nice little ATV camouflage. I mean, it was a nice. That too got cut. It's Everybody it. wondered when Jack Swagger was going to get his punishment for his DUI or OUI. It starts now. There's no question. I mean, um, didn't go over on ADR Monday Night Raw. He didn't fare much better. I think Jack Swagger's America is closed for business right now. Mm. Government shutdown again? Well, they're cutting everywhere around here. That letter I was supposed to send you. I don't think it's going to come on Saturday. No, no? mail. You didn't hear? Well, that's not. Yeah. See, that's ridiculous. Is that all part of the swagger thing? But my check's supposed to be in that letter. Well, I'm sorry. You have to talk to the Postmaster General. <sighs> Wilfred Brindley. What a terrible week this has been so far. <laughs> For you, it has been, hasn't it? Uh, Good matchup, though. Two skilled technicians delivered in the confines of the squared circle. Alberto Del Rio ultimately getting the win on Jack Swagger. The pageantry over Alberto Del Rio's entrance was spectacular. You know, but and, it didn't and, resonate. And, 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 and let's talk about that entrance because you and I, we're sitting together, unfortunately, at WrestleMania. In the PWR section at WrestleMania. And Sweden section. we're watching this, and Alberto Del Rio needs to represent all the immigrants not just a certain group. And I think that would have helped him get a little more over with the fans because not everybody can relate. He wanted to be more like a civil rights leader of some kind. Well, represent everybody. You know, be the common man for the Croatians, immigrants. Yes. Mom, I mean, we're, we're, okay. Salvador. And I, I know you're getting nervous no, because, not I, because at all. I saw the look on your this face. This the online edition. I, I, and, I'm intrigued this and, time. And, you know, and let's, he didn't represent the Arabs. He didn't represent 
the um, the Polish, the Germans, all the other immigrants. It was I just the Italians. The Italians. It was just about being Mexican, and I don't think certain ethnic groups could relate or get behind him because they didn't feel like they were part of that celebration. Agreed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's just my thought on it. I mean, he, he's, he's uh, I mean, even when you've had other ethnic superstars, they would at least acknowledge the other masses around them, and that was not being done with Alberto Del Rio. Dolph Ziggler and Big E Langston versus Team Hell No, the tag team championships on the line. Dolph Ziggler and Big E Langston would come up short in their efforts to defeat Team Hell No this past Sunday night at WrestleMania. Langston's first in-ring showing as well in a real matchup. It happened at WrestleMania. Impressive as expected. And Dolph Ziggler does the J-O-B. And once again, it was there in front of us. Right there? That Dolph Ziggler like this, lays right there, down right in the, there you know in what, front of us. you're covering my camera. Slide that out of the way. Intent. People don't want to see your trophy. A lot of people pay to see my trophy. So he lays down, one, two, three. He gets the pinfall. I'm thinking, wow, once again, Dolph Ziggler just getting buried week after week after week. Well, why? Time on our tradition. Let's test the guy, see what happens be before it happens. And uh, Who are you looking we saw for what back happened there? on Monday night. Linda. She's still doing the splits over there. Else. She's got a dance she, with she hasn't been able to get up yet. What? Who broke her? Brunger. Oh. We'll talk much more about Dolph Ziggler's big win this past Monday night. Brand new world heavyweight champion this past Monday night on Raw as he cashed in. Now, actually, yeah, we'll talk about that on Saturday's edition. But before we get into that, the question that a lot of people have asked was, and I was this person who thought there was a chance it would happen on Sunday, is given now that WrestleMania is behind us, and really the lack of noteworthy news coming out of it, what is Ziggler cash in had been appropriate in MetLife Stadium on Not Sunday at night? all, because it, they were cheering for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was loud and we proud. We want Ziggler. Yeah. We want Ziggler. It was loud. Absolutely. I mean, they even did that during the WWE match. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they were yeah. chanting for it. Um, but it wouldn't have made sense. It would have got lost in the shuffle. Really? Even after Be we thought that here's chance why, was going because into it. Here's why. Good Morning America, who was on Monday morning? I was sweet. It was John Cena. He was on all the talk shows Monday morning. Mm -hmm. He was on Regis and Kelly and Michael. You know what I mean? He was everywhere. They can't bring Dolph Ziggler along because he won also. It was about, Je WrestleMania 29 was about the rise of John Cena. Not Dolph Ziggler, not about The Miz. A match that many are saying was the match of the night and the greatest in-ring competition that occurred in MetLife Stadium as part of WrestleMania 29, that being CM Punk versus The Undertaker. The streak, 20 and 0. Would it be 20 and Punk or 21 and 0? And unfortunately, CM Punk would lose that matchup to The Undertaker. And I will say this, David Hero, and I believe this in my heart of hearts, the streak, to me, this guy, doesn't mean anything anymore. Now. Oh, good God I, almighty. Finish, Are you finish, serious? Let me, finish, let me finish. Let me finish. Now that it's 21 and 0. Going now he's forward, legal. Going forward, what does it matter? He's not going to lose. The streak will not end. That was made clear because CM Punk was the only viable competitor that could be a threat to the streak. He didn't do you it. got a fever? So now what's going to happen? WrestleMania 30, oh, 22 and 0. Great. Pyro numbers. He might screen. not wrestle next year. He 31, might be done now. 23 and 0. If he's done, then he should have lost. Not to pass the torch, but to make it that much more newsworthy. But he did not. CM Punk won. I'm sorry, lost. The Undertaker streak remains but, firm, and I don't But care. the people won. Because in two weeks from now, they're going to see you get your Superman tattoo. My... Legal counsel. You know what? What you that. said is video recorded. It's yeah. it's it's archived. Yeah. And I didn't sign nothing. You can't back out. No, I'm not trying to back out. I'm just making because, sure that I meet my legal obligations. Because everybody will then think of you as being a coward. You, you know, know what? They can think of me as being a coward because this coward won the 2012 Pro Wrestling Port Draft. Whoops. Really? That was a five second pose. Yeah. It was obnoxious. Your thoughts on the match? I thought it was a great match. I thought it, I thought it told a great story. There was a lot of emotion. Um, there were a few times, I don't know if I was just tired, but I actually thought Punk could win. 
But, um, you know. There it is, folks. Shovel and ground. Dirt oh, over come shopping. on. There is no way. I must way. have been tired. You disclaimed it. I must have been tired, but I thought fuck could win. I did. I mean, it's like, oh, this could be interesting. Oh, what was I thinking? You know? I was just drowsy. I mean, we had a, the shenanigans party was ridiculous. Uh -huh. It went to the wee hours of the morning. The whole wee I was wee. exhausted. But The Undertaker is the phenom. Undertaker is WrestleMania. You know, everyone says Shawn Michaels missed WrestleMania. Uh-uh. It is Undertaker. He is WrestleMania. That streak means more than any belt defended or won at WrestleMania. I will say this about WrestleMania overall. And let's not forget The Miz won the Intercontinental Championship over Wade Barrett in the pre-show, only to lose it. But I will say this about WrestleMania. A couple things they did great. The pre-show and treating it almost like a Super Bowl game with the analysts. Uh, great panel, by the way. The post-show as well. Fantastic. However, this was one of the weirdest WrestleManias I've ever seen. Weird in the fact that we got no America the Beautiful, no National Anthem. The well, you didn't need it because you had the Statue of Liberty built on top of the ring. Highlight of the night for me. But you know, I could tell it was the Statue of Liberty from behind. Do you see uh, Linda tried to go up there? She thought they were giving tours. Really? Yeah. Is that why she got taken on handcuffs? I'm not supposed to tell anybody about that. Um, Here's the thing. There were no backstage vignettes? No, nothing backstage. No Mean Gene. I mean, we saw Snooki, but that was about it. Right, and that was on the pre-show, I believe. They did the whole mid-time, or half-time pyro attendance thing right before the Roxena matchup. The pacing of this show overall was, I'm not saying it was bad, I'm not saying it was good, but it was weird. But the pacing was far better than the Hall of Fame the night before. <laughs> we're talking more than Backland? They did some glorious stuff in the Hall of Fame. That Mick Foley, CM Punk, Chris Jericho thing, the elbow drop. The amazing yikes. thing is Mick Foley's acceptance speech, speech was 57 minutes. They got it done within two and a half to three minutes on, <laughs> on, on, on this past week's broadcast. That's, that's a lot of editing magic, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of magic, the magic continues this Saturday night as we bring you the weekend edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. We're going to be looking at the Fandango effect, if you will. If we're you will. We're also going to be talking a little bit more about WrestleMania 29 and the very, very active post-WrestleMania uh, post Raw from this past Monday night. So be sure to tune into that. Also, don't miss tomorrow night. It is PWR Interactive Live with Meathead and Matthew Thomas uh, right after Impact Wrestling, which is live from Corpus Christi, uh, Texas, tomorrow night. And then also on Friday, hashtag hot tag, The Rock Goes Home. What does it all mean for WWE? We'll see you over the course of the next few days on PWR. And for that one, this is Damian Nelson saying farewell and so long.